Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Monday, and uh, that means it's a little bit of a mosh we got going today. A couple things I want to talk about to begin with. It's uh, it's now 2:45 a.m. <laughs> down the basement. I am so I'm so screwed up. I don't know what happens with me. You know, my last 16 years of working nights have have definitely changed me. I cannot. I can't get up early during the day, so I stay up and I can't try and go to bed early. You know, my girlfriend says, why don't you just stay up, get tired and go to bed early? I can't do it. You know, there's nothing worse than you ever try and force yourself to go to bed early when your your body isn't ready to go to sleep and you're sitting there and then all the bad thoughts come in, like all the things you're supposed to do and that you have to do and the stress. I can't do it. I, I have to be so tired that when I go to bed, I walk into my bedroom. I... <laughs> I hit the mattress and two seconds later, I'm out like a light. That's what I like to do. I like to be that tired. There's nothing worse than trying to, you know, like you're counting sheep trying to go to sleep. Oh, that's a horrible feeling. So I just stay up till I get tired. And lately it's been like uh, the next day. So anyway, we're down here. I want to relax a little bit. And uh, and another nice thing is I can come down here. It's really quiet down here. And I don't. I know a lot of people say, what about your neighbors? I'm in the basement. My neighbors cannot hear any of my machines. However, the only machine I have down here that my neighbors could possibly hear is the pancake compressor. <laughs> you ever see these things? If you don't have one of these, believe me, do not ever buy one of these cheap pancake compressors. They are the worst. They are so loud and so they draw like 15 amps on startup every time. I mean, they're just horrible. Uh, there are so many better compressors out there. Do not get a pancake compressor, especially the cheap ones. Uh, so today, I was thinking about, you know, it's been a year ago. You know, we had about half, less than half the subscribers a year ago. And, you know, we did the Stanley 199 challenge. You remember that? That was a lot of fun. And, and a lot of people that tune in, you know, they don't go search your old videos and stuff like that. So I thought we would just uh, have a little chat and maybe revisit just for a little while get a little relaxation and let's go check it out now i do enjoy a good utility knife and uh or they call them stanley knives because stanley was a big producer of them but they are utility knives and especially the fixed ones i really always like them and it's a timeless design and stanley reintroduced the 199 you could get it again today so uh a year ago today we put out a challenge to buy one of these customize it you know, a lot of people, not only did they have a lot of fun, you can just Google, I mean, go on a YouTube search box and write in Stanley 199 Challenge or Scoutcrafter 199 Challenge, and you'll see, you know, a ton of these videos. And guys really had a great time doing their own knives and making their own, you know, restoring it and whatever. But this is a good time, way to get in the shop if you only have a short amount of time and you want to customize a tool and you don't, you don't have to worry about screwing anything up because these are cheap. You know, a couple dollars, you can pick one up. But this came with a lot of tools, and I saw it like this. I said, you know, let's just clean this one up here. And the same thing with this one here. Look at this, you know. And these are, this is the $12.99. That's the $12.99. Cast iron, the cast iron ones. Uh, you'll see what I'm talking about when we get to it. So let's take these apart and uh, work on these for a little bit. And you'll see what uh, a lot of fun these things are doing. Okay, the $12.99, we took the paint off with the paint stripper. The rest of it will get off. Don't worry about the little bit. You always get that with the wire brush, but it's uh, it's really easy to do with the paint stripper. It beats trying to get off with the wire brush. Now, this is important. This is aluminum, okay? Uh, uh, using a steel wire brush on aluminum can lead to some problems, and There's I'll show you a block you of aluminum, and I'm going to show you on this surface here why you have to be very careful with the because wire The wire wheel. wheel comes in different, almost like grits. It's stiffness of the wire. This red one here from Harbor Freight is, is very stiff. The brass colored one is as less this stiff. This is an earlier one from Harbor Freight. Uh, it was brass colored. This one's quite a bit uh, finer than the other two. So this is the one I use when I'm gonna go on certain materials that I need to bend around and get into. However, when it comes to aluminum like this, you have to be very careful because it will tend to deform the aluminum. I'm gonna show you on that block now. Okay, let's take a look here. You see what we did here? Now, take a good look at that surface. It looks almost like an orange peel, like a very rough. And the reason that is, is because the wire wheel tends to like melt the surface of the aluminum. 
and and creates this weird surface no matter how smooth it is to begin with if you hit that wire brush it's going to do this to that surface so you have to be extremely careful when using a wire brush on aluminum I always stay away from it when you, you know can. when we look at this bar of aluminum you don't know what type of aluminum it is a lot of time I deal with a lot of 6061 that's like an aircraft aluminum but this one here you don't know what it is but you get that fixture it, uh, that surface texture is there any way to get around it well the problem with aluminum is a lot of times it'll clog up your your belt so you always got to be careful with all your tools that clogs up and you you never want to use aluminum on a grinding wheel so uh let's see if we could smooth this out a little now you can see the coarse sanding disc the surface at least but you can also see how much aluminum particles get caught up and clogged up in the sanding disc itself Okay, next we're going to use the uh, a worn 100 disc. You can see what the reflection looks like there. Now we're going to switch to the fiber disc that goes onto the grinder. Okay, here's the reflection for it with the. Uh, you can see what we did with the fiber wheel. It's coming up nice, nice and smooth to the touch. But you see, it also clogs the fiber wheel a little bit. That's why aluminum is always a problem. Our last step, we'll just take it to the buffing wheel with some coarse emery. And lastly, you can see what aluminum does to your, your buffing wheel. You see that cakes it all up and it, you see that shine in there? Now you're going to have to dress this wheel. You don't really want to use it again because uh, you see it, it, it's all aluminum particles and we'll, we'll dress that out. But, but look at the nice finish that we got here. Okay, look at that. Uh, just from the top of this scrap bar. Isn't that nice? <laughs> It is very, it's very rewarding, especially since aluminum, you know, but you still see micro scratches because we didn't go through all the belts. But look at that, that's pretty good, right? Okay, we uh, took this over to the wire brush. You can see what a beautiful job it does. Now, you can see here there's a little gap in there in the middle. Now, that's the way these were cast. Now, sometimes I find you can remove some of that gap. Now, if you look here, only one of these halves is flat here the other half has this protruding and this protruding you see so you can't take this but if you take some sandpaper put it on something flat like a flat piece of glass and rub it like this a lot of times you can get these to fit a little bit better but don't go crazy because you know you'll be chasing your tail trying to get this to fit right if they don't fit right from the beginning but you see how nice this is but you also see here the casting marks right it's just that's horrible but the dimpling in here I always like, but the casting marks here will come right out with the sand, the belt sander. Now, here we did on the, the fine wire brush, you could see here there's all nicks from, because it was a used knife, but uh, this the belt sander with a fine belt will take that out. And also, what's very good is the fiber wheel on these. The fiber wheel works fantastic on aluminum, gives a nice satin finish. But you can see where we're at now, we're going to just get rid of some of these marks up here and... You know, you can see here, get rid of some of this pitting, and it's aluminum. And let me show you one thing interesting. You see these three types of blades here? There's three blades. Now, all these blades are different. You can see here by the number of holes. You see this one here only has two holes on top. That's a Stanley 99 or something. This one here, it says a 950 something, whatever. I can't really read it here. Maybe you can read it better. One, two, three holes. This one here only has two holes, but it's a large blade. And look at the size difference here. We'll hold these up so not all utility knife blades are the same you see the difference in size there and uh, the top holes line up but this is both have two where this one has three you see so you know there are different blades you know i always try and say and add a little bit of scout craft to red you know because i love that red and chrome but I'm telling you, I, I, I tried to have this grow on me overnight. I've been looking at it, and it's just not growing on me. So I'm going to take it out. Now, the type of paints I like to use for doing the uh, the utility knives is this Tamiya clear coat paint. And what this means is that these colors here, depending, this is a X25, X24 is yellow, you know, but they're all the X series. And you can see they're a clear paint which means that, uh, and it's acrylic paint, you see it's a, it's a clear, so when it goes on, you do see underneath it, and the thicker you put it on, you can make it into a real deep, I always liked it, um, you could thin it out using this Tamiya thinner, but to clean the brushes and also to wipe the paint off the article, I like to use acetone 
or paint that also works, but acetone works really good. These are great paints. They're not uh, really cheap, but they're, you know, they last a long time. I've had these for years and you only use a little bit. And like I said, they're acrylic, but they don't thin out with water. You need the thinner if you're going to thin it out. But I never had a chance to, you know, need to. I don't spray it. I just brush it. Now, to highlight the lettering on these knives, what we do is we flood the background with the clear red, in this case, Tamaya. And then what we do is using a swatch of paper towel dipped in thinner, we gently wipe off the tops of the letters, letting the background show through. It really makes them highlight. Now, on the inside of the castings here, you know, it's always a good idea to, to go through it, wire brush it. And what I do is I shellac. Now, these are these have been shellac. It's dry. You can see the markings. This is 162. This is 161. And then there's additional numbers down there. I don't know what that means, but uh, you can see here. Now, you don't have to worry about it rusting from the inside out because it is cast. And, and cast can also rust, you know, and you don't want to open up a, a knife years later and see it filled with rust. So it takes you two minutes just to shellac the inside and now it's protected. Now, you know, my favorite part, remember what these utility knives look like before we started. And we're calling this project done. Let's take these one at a time and take a look at what we did. Okay, first of all, let's look at this beautiful Stanley 1299. Now, I am such a fan of this classic design and you can see, you know, I like the dimpling in here and I shellacked all this because, you know, it's, it is raw and I don't want it to rust. So that's all shellacked except for here. This is all polished down and look at the difference. Look at the, how smooth it is. I didn't try and get, you know, it's cast so you don't really get a mirror shine, but just look how smooth and nice that is in the back, you know. Um... I tried to include the Scout Crafter Red. It just wasn't doing it for me. And I had to, you know, to get the paint stripper and take it off. That's why it's always good to paint tools. You don't have to worry. Anything you don't like. I know John Fix <laughs> knows about that. Because we, a lot of times, we'll pick a tool and then redo it. But it's just, uh, this is just perfect the way it is. I mean, I I have one that I did with color back, oh, I, I don't know how long ago. With color, this is the twelve ninety nine with color I did a long time ago, and you know it's it's nice and and okay, but it's just such a classic knife, you know. I don't know, it's 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 what you like, it's what you feel like the color of the day. But these cast knives are so when you do them up like this, and and you have to use a new belt because this doesn't come down easy. And there's always going to be a couple inclusions that you can't take down any further than they are. There's one there, I think. There's one on top here. You can't go down because uh, as if you notice the hole starting to get bigger, that's an inclusion. It's not part of the uh, the uh, the surface casting. So uh, beautiful knives, aren't they? The twelve ninety nine. Next, we got the beautiful Stanley one ninety nine. Now this is an earlier model because uh, the later models have the same Stanley one ninety nine on both sides. The earlier model says "Made in USA, blades inside." I did this, you know, uh, with the uh, clear red, and just doesn't that look beautiful? You know, it's just classic, just the way it is, you know. that's uh, And there was a lot of, remember, the nicks on top, and, the, you know, there was bad scrapes here. And, you know, I didn't take it down to a mirror, but I just took it down to a, re a very workable, usable, beautiful Stanley 199. Let me show you some of the other 199s we did. Now, these are all done with that Tamiya paint. We did these over a year ago, and, and you can see some of them. You take like this one here, I took down to a full polish. You can see here, this one's a, a full polish on this aluminum, and that we did with just the clear red on both sides. This one here, again, I was experimenting. I don't know what colors I like. This one's a yellow and a red on one side. On the other side, it's a uh, all red but notice they're both stanley 199 on both sides so that's the difference between the newer models here is a uh, uh a blue and this is blue and red i just like this that's why i did on both sides and then here this one is a green and yellow and on the other side we have the uh, blue and red like this one here but that's how i figured out what colors i like because you don't really know until you try it you, you, that's why you experiment this is so much fun if you haven't done one of these i uh I implore you to go out, buy one of the 199 knives, strip the paint off, and have some fun. So in closing, uh, sometimes you can go back to an old project, redo it, come back, and have some fun like we did today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a great start of the week. Take care now. Bye-bye. <laughs>